Welcome to first course on Power Systems, Module 8. And this module is on synchronous generators. And like our previous modules, this is also very tightly connected to this reference textbook that we have. So in this uh, module, uh, Chapter 9, we'll see the importance of uh, synchronous generators. And then we'll look at their structure. And then we'll also look at the principle on which they operate and come up with a very simple equivalent circuit. And then we look at uh, uh, stability in these uh, generators. Uh, what is the steady state uh, stability limit? And then also a very important topic, which is field excitation control uh, for reactive power adjustment. And then we'll also look at uh, you know, how we can model it for di different types of uh, studies, like uh, fault and uh, uh, transient stability. So these are topics that we are going to, to look at in this module. So I, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, it's a very important apparatus in uh, power systems, as we'll see in a second in the next slide. And uh, most of the reactive power in uh, power systems uh, supplied by these uh, synchronous generators. So together, you know, uh, it makes it very important uh, uh, apparatus for us to understand. So let's uh, see where these are used. Where are these synchronous generators used? So whether we have coal or we have gas or nuclear, uh, we end up uh, having this, uh, some kind of thermodynamic cycle and uh, then driving a turbine. And uh, this turbine is then connected to the synchronous generator as you see here. Or we could have a uh, hydro generator where we have this uh, water head, which is then driving this uh, turbine, which in turn drives the generator. So, so it's a very important uh, item for generating power. Now, uh, let's look at uh, the cross section of uh, this generator, usually it's long, and if we cut it perpendicular to the, the shaft of this uh, synchronous generator and look at it from one side, this cross section, we'll see something like this in figure B, where we have the stator, which is stationary, as the name implies, and then we have rotor here in the middle, and uh, rotor and stator are separated by a small air gap because rotor is rotating and stator is stationary. So we have to have this air gap. Okay. And uh, there are various types of structures. Here I'm showing a, a two-pole machine where uh, you know the flux lines are as shown here. And you can think of this as a north pole and this as a south pole here. Or we could have a four-pole machine uh, in uh, turbo alternators. Uh, quite often we have four-pole machines. And uh, at 60 hertz, they are running at uh, 1800 RPM. Okay, uh, so that's shown here the flux uh, flux paths, and we have two pairs of poles, north south, north south here, or we could uh, have the same uh, type of uh, uh, the same number of poles, but uh, produced. So th this is uh, you know in Figure B, we have a cylindrical rotor, just like we have in uh, figure A. So regardless of what axis you're looking at, the, the reluctance is the same. But you could have a salient pole machine, as shown here, uh, making up a four-pole structure. So these two are A and B, a non-salient pole, and this is a salient pole machine here. Okay, so, uh, you know, quite often um, this, uh, these generators connected to hydraulic turbines have uh, pole structure looking like this, where, where they may have a lot many number of poles than I'm showing over here. <clears throat> All right, so uh, for our understanding purposes, let's just uh, talk about uh, just two pole machine here, just to simplify our understanding, and then it can be extended to any number of uh, pole pairs. So generally, you know, these machines have a uh, three-phase winding, as it's shown here in figure A. Uh, we have phase A along this um, magnetic axis of it as A axis, and then figure uh, axis B, 
uh, an axis C made up of uh, other two windings and uh, uh, each winding is supplied by its own current IA, IB and IC. Okay? So these are 120 degrees displaced in uh, space. All right. Now let's concentrate on just uh, one of the phases, phase A. And what we see here is that uh, we would like to produce a, a sinusoidal MMF in space, in air gap. And therefore, the conductor density of these uh, windings may be uh, sinusoidally distributed. That is, along the magnetic axis, which is over here, the conductor density is very small. So the current is going into conductor one along the length of this uh, armature or the machine and then comes out of one prime, then goes into two, but in this two we have, uh, we are showing more number of conductors. So as a function of theta, the conductor density is uh, going up and uh, its maximum along here and here. The reason is that we would like to produce a flux uh, density distribution, which is uh, distributed like this. It's a maximum along this magnetic axis over here. So that's the reason why these uh, windings could be can be sinusoidally distributed. Okay, the conductor density. All right. So if you have a three-phase connection, uh, three three windings, they may be connected in a Y, or they could be connected in a delta. I'm showing here a Y-connected machine where A prime and B prime and C prime of these three windings uh, may be connected together to form this neutral. So this is just a representation recognizing that each phase winding may be sinusoidally distributed as shown in this previous slide. <clears throat> All right. So uh, now we come to the rotor, and also on the rotor, uh, usually these are wound rotor machines where we supply DC current to the rotor field winding. And again, the objective here is to produce uh, flux density distribution because of this uh, rotor current to be sinusoidally distributed in space. So if we have some structure and windings uh, as shown over here, where you know crosses are showing currents going into it, and uh, darks, uh, the darts mean the, the currents coming out. The flux density distribution here would be maximum and maximum over here, make, this making, making it a north pole and this making it a south pole uh, as far as the, the rotor winding is concerned. <clears throat> okay? So this is called the field winding, the rotor winding. Now we, now we go into the principle of operation. How do these generators produce sinusoidal voltages and uh, in turn produce, uh, uh, you know, when you supply it through a prime mover. So, so let's say that uh, we are just uh, looking at phase A winding uh, and uh, we can, and the voltage induced in it and uh, let's agree on the current direction. Uh, let's say the current is uh, flowing like this here, IA, and EA is shown with this plus minus polarity over here. So this is the, the generator convention because uh, we are studying a generator and uh, the current is coming out of this uh, positive uh, terminal here. So that's the, the direction that we have picked. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, at this instant of time, uh, we have chosen this uh, rotor to be such that the north pole is uh, vertical, vertically oriented, north and south are vertically oriented. So as far as this phase A winding is concerned, uh, not showing this uh, sinusoidal distribution of it, we can just show that, uh, uh, you know, just by two, two circles like this here, this phase A winding here. And uh, the conductor density for a, phase A winding is maximum around here. And similarly, the flux lines coming from the the rotor winding uh, are maximum there as well. So, uh, you know, you can say that uh, uh, this phase A winding has, with this orientation of the rotor, maximum voltage induced, where the rotor is turning at this speed, omega sync, in a counterclockwise direction here. So as the caption of this figure says, this rotor position shows 
uh, shown induces maximum E sub A here due to this uh, field flux here. 